Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to Step 2 in our Free Steps to Gladiator for Frostmage. Before we go any further, if you missed Step 1, be sure to go back and watch that first. If you've already seen it, then you're in the right place. Step 2 is all about preparing for PvP, including how you should be min-maxing your damage, and then we'll be covering how to make the most out of the crowd control you have at your disposal. So, let's get started. As a DPS, knowing how to deal the maximum damage is essential, but knowing the basics is very important. Frostmage damage arsenal consists of Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Frozen Orb, Flurry, and then Ray of Frost, Ice Nova, and Comet Storm if talented. Frost is all about shattering. Look to land as many shatters as possible. A shatter is casting an ability on a frozen target. This then results you in having an increased critical strike chance, and for the case of Ice Lance, triples your damage. And as the deep shatter PvP talent is also mandatory, Frostbolt also deals 150% increased damage if shattered. Now, every ability you have as a Frost Mage can benefit from shatter. You have multiple ways of shattering, including the obvious Frost Nova and Pet Nova. Then Ice Nova or Flow Flurry are also ways to shatter your abilities. With this in mind, Frost damage can be set into two categories. This is your sustain damage and then your burst damage. Your sustain damage is simple. It's entirely made up of Frostbolt and it actually does very good damage now thanks to the Tunnel of Ice Azerite tree. Frostbolt also applies your slow, builds up icicles, as well as on top of that giving you a chance to gain both Fingers of Frost and Brain Freeze procs, which we will be using for bursting. Now you have so many different ways of going about bursting as a Frost Mage, but your burst abilities are Ice Lance, Frozen Orb, Flurry, Ice Nova, Comet Storm, and even Frostbolt. The easiest to do is Instant Burst, that relies on you having these cooldowns up. Orb, Comet Storm, Ice Nova. Simply, what you do is use all these abilities, followed up with Ice Lances using any of Fingers of Frost procs you still may have. Your Comet Storm will shatter off your Ice Nova, giving you some huge damage. But there is many other different ways to burst. If you can cast during a burst window, you'll want to shatter a Frostbolt. So something that looks like this. Frostbolt, shatter with Ice Nova, Flurry, Pet Nova or Frost Nova, followed up with an Ice Lance. Due to the travel time of your Frostbolt, both these abilities will then shatter. But overall, you'll want to just focus on using the shatter mechanic paired with your damaging abilities, and trying to make sure you shatter as many abilities as you can. Also, look to always use Fingers of Frost procs and Brain Freeze procs quickly as to not waste them, unless you are delaying them for a kill attempt. The only long offensive cooldowns Mage really has are Icy Veins, Frozen Orb and Ray of Frost. Frozen Orb you'll want to just use when you're doing setups, ideally on a lockdown target. For instance, if you're playing with a Rogue, wait for Kidney Shot and then use Orb on top of the target, making sure to use all Fingers of Frost procs generated during this time as to not waste them. It's also worth noting that Blizzard reduces the cooldown of your Orb every time it deals damage. This means getting up a Blizzard on stacked enemies will allow you to burst more often. Ray of Frost is a bit more situational. It's good damage, but not very high compared to the rest of your burst abilities. Mainly use this when your enemy is going to be going behind pillars, or they're low enough to the point where you know a few ticks will finish them off, when you have no other instant damage left. Icy Veins gives you a huge boost to your haste. The best use of this ability is when you're able to freely cast some Frostbolts. Chain casting Frostbolts and then shattering them at a faster rate will give you some insane overall damage, Alternatively, you can pop Icy Veins during an instant burst window for some shorter globals. 
Now we've got a firm understanding about Frost Mage damage, let's talk about crowd control. As Frost Mage, crowd control is a crucial part of scoring and setting up kills. Frost has very impactful crowd control, including Roots, Slows, Polymorph, Ring of Frost and even Counterspell. Starting with the most notable and recognisable crowd control in the game, we of course have Polymorph. Now this has two uses. First is aiming to secure a Polymorph on the enemy healer. This is best done with the use of your Shimmer, giving you the ability to blink whilst casting. Landed Polymorphs against skilled players can often be hard, so any help from your team in the form of a stun can be of great use. Although when going for Polymorphs, you should always be aware when up against Druids and Priests. Druids can shift into forms to avoid Polymorph and Priests can use their ability Premonition to break the Polymorph after the initial cast. The second use of Polymorph is defensively. You may find times in games where either you or your team is in trouble. Although dispellable, Polymorph can be a great tool in peeling the enemy team to allow you to survive. Frost also has an abundance of roots. You've got your normal Frost Nova, your Pet Nova and even Ice Nova. The standard use of roots is as a tool to kite melee. For instance, if you're getting trained by a rogue, you can root him full with one of your roots and then if he gets dispelled, simply Polymorph the dispel. Polymorph and Roots should be interchained as a way to keep targets locked down and peeled. However, you can also use Roots at the same way on healers. For instance, if a healer has no dispel, you can root him behind the pillar so he's unable to heal his team. You can also use Roots as a way to secure follow-up crowd control. Ring of Frost is essentially an AoE Polymorph on a different school of magic. Ring of Frost is obviously on Frost, whilst Polymorph is on Arcane. The standard use of Ring of Frost is when you're facing Druids, as you can still land a Ring out of a stun if they're in any of their forms. You can also use Ring of Frost as a tool to cross crowd control. For instance, you could Polymorph a DPS and then Ring of Frost a healer. Although, unlike Polymorph, you will need some form of lockdown to ensure the Ring of Frost lands. A final use is just as a defensive Ring. This can be placed either on the ground near where you are or even around a teammate resulting in all enemies trying to pass being frozen. Slows are also a very important part of Frost Mage's kit and a vital tool in controlling your enemies. Your main tools for doing this are going to come from Cone of Cold, Frostbolt and Blizzard. Frostbolt is your standard slow but obviously requires a cast time. Don't try to keep this up on melee as often standing there tanking their damage to do so is not worth it. What you should ideally be doing is utilising Cone of Cold as its instant. Blizzard, on the other hand, is a perfect tool to put around pillars for enemies to have a harder job line of sight in you, or giving yourself an easier job kiting them. When playing with the Freezing Rain talent against melee, remember you gain access to instant Blizzard that can be then used to assist in kiting grouped up melee. Our final form of crowd control mages have access to is of course Counterspell. Now, this can obviously be used in multiple ways. First, just as a way to stop heals, creating more pressure for you and your team, and an extra way to extend your crowd control. Next is peeling for your team. So what I mean by this is stopping important casts like Chaos Bolts, Greater Pyros, or even Vampiric Touches. And then the final use is stopping crowd control. This can be offensively or defensively. Stopping an opposing mage's polymorph during a setup can more often than not be more impactful than counterspelling a healer, for instance. Alright then guys, that brings us to the end of step 2 of our free steps to Gladiator for a Frost Mage series. Make sure to be on the lookout for step 3 where we're giving you a breakdown of compositions and your goals once you actually get into the arena. 